bring magic into your life every Sunday night. Play the magic word game at Rainbow Soul. Visit rainbowsoul.show. Subscribe to Rainbow Soul newsletter and watch out for it in your email. Why? Well, inside that newsletter will be a magic word. Some words maybe you never even heard of. And we will explore the definition and history in the show. If you recognize the word, be sure to share your wisdom with Rainbow Soul in your comment. Each newsletter will have a new magic word. If you know the word when we ask for it, you can simply put it in the comments. First commenter gets a free Rainbow Soul sticker. They are round stickers with Rainbow Soul logo and they say, Rainbow Soul Transgender is Sacred. Hashtag Rainbow Soul Vodcast. As well as a queer version and non-binary version printed on high quality, large circle stickers. The platforms will keep the time of your post and this will determine who wins. If two or more people all say it within the same minute, according to the platforms, everyone gets a sticker. You can win up to three different times, three different stickers, non-binary, transgender, queer. Rainbow Soul will contact you through a message depending on the platform you commented during the live to get your address slash mailing information for your sticker. We do not share any of this information, including your email. You will receive Rainbow Soul newsletter. But you can always unsubscribe if you choose. Welcome to Rainbow Soul, a live show and podcast in search of deep answers and medicine about consciousness, spirituality, witchcraft, natural magic, and queer inclusive spiritual paths of many varieties. We will explore the use of herbs, candles, colors, and nature in our personal lives, as well as queer inspired rituals designed with transgender and non-binary people in mind. We are welcoming all pagans, indigenous two-spirits, witchy folks, conscious seekers, and people off the beaten path who want to explore the human spiritual experience that we are all capable of having. With deep reverence and anti-racist values, inclusivity, and a healthy and honest respect for our ancestors, Rainbow Soul brings diverse guests and topics all related to queer spiritual experience. Tap into this amazing resource live and find a supportive, safe environment while exploring interesting topics and diverse guests. Listen on your favorite podcast platform and catch the show at your convenience and still participate in the contest and games. Get more information about games and contests at our website, rainbowsoul.show. Rainbowsoul.show. Thank you for tuning in to Rainbow Soul. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, how are you? Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're watching. Thanks for tuning in to Rainbow Soul. Welcome. So glad you're here. I'm Hollis Taylor. I'm the author of Divine Androgyny, which is a sacred path for gender variant people. And um, it's all about carving out your own path of magic. However, that works for you as a gender variant person and exploring that and what that means. And I'm also a psychic and a medium and astrologer and things like that. And a general all around magical pagan person. And this is my fun two spirit friend, Lacrosse. All right, Lacrosse, Hi, tell us about who you are. Hi, my name is Lacrosse Ortiz. I am a trans man, Jewish, Taino, atheist. Uh, I am the host of Master of None because I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, and just love learning. Uh, my spirituality is, is <clears throat> I don't believe you need a supreme being to be a spiritual person. Um, hence why I'm an atheist. And yep, that's me. All right. Well, I'm very excited about who we have today. Let me just say, Same. so before Same. we do that, I just want us all to take a minute to have a little meditation. So let's all take a deep breath. 
And every time you take a deep breath, try to blow out as much as possible. When you do that, you let it all go. Whatever needs to be let go, we all have crap. Just needs, just let it go for the next hour, okay? You can pick it back up in an hour if you really want to. So take a deep breath. Let it all go. And if your feet are touching the floor, your bottom is touching the chair, and your back is touching the chair, just be present. And be present in that moment and take a deep breath. And we're going to ask that all the queer divine energies of the world come down and sit with us and help us connect and hear from all the wonderful messages that we need to hear from the cosmos and from all the magical people in our life. <sighs> Take a deep breath and just be present. And as we're present, I'll tell you that really helps me like before I start anything that's important, especially if I'm trying to learn something, just take a deep breath, get present, feel your butt on the chair, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome, Eric. We're so glad you're here. It's good to see you, Eric. It's good to have you back. And hi, Sandy. We love you. And Mixter Sage Hall, we're so glad you're here. I love that. I love using Mix, MX. I just love that. It's fabulous. Good job. <laughs> um, today, our guest is a particularly magical, special, um, inspiring person, I would say. Um, and that he has been on the show before. And, um, one of the things that like really calls to me that speaks to me is their, con his connection to the cosmos. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, that as well as the connection to mother earth. And I feel like being connected to both of those. Now, I don't know about you across, but when you have time to like keep up on, astrology and stuff like that does that help you flow better in your life yeah it kind of like for me like when i do like i listen to a certain podcast so <clears throat> when i start realizing how everything's aligned it kind of helps prepare me for the week and prepare me what intentions to set how to have the the universe work for me instead against me so it, it really just helps me get grounded and prepare for what's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I still get caught up in the energy of whatever it was mm -hmm. or is. Um, sometimes it helps me make decisions. So if everybody's recently been experiencing like Mars and Saturn just met in the same sign. So Saturn made Mars sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Mars is ready to do shit and Saturn said sit down yeah. and uh, yeah. so a lot of us are ready to do shit but then we're not mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that my guest tonight uh, talks about is that our connection to the cosmos and how we are all star people and things like that so and I want to say that he has numerous books he has classes you can you can sign up for his classes He's, he's known in, in the pagan community, as far as I know, as an elder, like he has the wisdom. And my friends, how many queer elders do we have? Let's honor one of, one of my favorite queer elders, and that is Orion Foxwood. Welcome to the show. Well, hello there. Hello there. When y'all were describing yourselves, though, you left some uh, adjectives, well, not adjectives, some descriptors out. You're we did. Fabulous, you're fabulous. You're beautiful. You're wise. Oh. You're wonderful. You're blessed. You're anointed. And man, are we glad that you're alive. Oh. <laughs> thank you. I needed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much, Orion. I appreciate mm -hmm. that magic. And I, I really appreciate your magic, Orion. Like you are a magical, amazing person. And I think a lot of LGBTQ youth are looking for their elders in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I know I was. 
<laughs> when I was a seeker, I was looking. I was like, where are they? There's yeah. got to be some queer, smart, magical people out there. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your history, like the stuff that you've gotten involved with and things like that? You mean my path to such wonderful people? That's what you really mean, right? <laughs> yes. So, um, wow. Uh, I'm Southern Appalachian in, in terms of my culture. I grew up in the Shenandoah Valley which is in the foothills of Appalachia, really, because uh, what we have is we have Appalachian culture pouring down from the mountains and then uh, Southern culture down in the, the valley itself. So there's this admixture of culture that happens there. And one of the things that really carved me out, well, two things that really carved me out at the earliest times of my life was I was born with the veil. Uh, my mama was born with it. My sister was born with it. That's what a lot of folks call the call. It's a certain way the placental sheath falls over the eyes that normally comes off the baby when the baby's born. But with folks born with the veil, they have to actually take that off. And it denotes the second sight. So uh, there was that. And then my mom was born on a place called Hollingsworth Place, which is a plantation. They were sharecroppers. Uh, mom was born in night. I always have to get this. One, two, three, four. This 1924. 34, 1934, because it's January 2nd, 1934. And if you look at that, it's one, two, three, four. Isn't that cool? And uh, on and, and they were living in the slaves' quarters on this uh, place, on Hollingsworth Place. And uh, it, it, this gets really magical. Mom was not born in a hospital. I mean, they did, they were po. They couldn't even afford the other OR. Right? <laughs> they couldn't afford the other OR and poor. And so the beautiful matron, who, who midwifed uh, my birth was a freed slave. And her mom together, uh, they, were, uh, they were emancipated when she was a little girl, um, but she remembered enough to tell me the stories. So at the earliest age, as far as I can remember, this incredible matron, this woman who in our family was considered a saint, uh, carved, she carved me out in terms of around diversity around uh, our, our uglier sides of our history in America. There's more, there's a lot more to it, but that's why I have such a commitment to diversity and a commitment to uh, nail a stake in the heart of racism, sexism, homophobia, you know, uh, these horrible soul cages that kill people, you know? You know, I was just, um, I listened to a very powerful woman of color who was explaining the experience of, you know, of how being a slave getting passed down over generations, how that affects people today. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I think it affects white people too. And this is why oh, yeah. the abuser is no less away from being hurt yep. just because we're the perpetrator at, or white people were the perpetrator doesn't mean or are still the perpetrator at times that hurts them that separation hurts them and that's part of like i think also needs to be part of the conversation that if you are white your privilege actually also hurts you it does because we're not equal and until we have equality and harmony humans will always be off balance we have you know, to find our balance right there was two uh, wisdom statements. My mama said, my mama had a lot of uh, Appalachian wisdom and she would say these like simple things that were so powerful. One of them was you cannot bless the fruits and curse the roots. Right. I'll tell you a little story about that in a minute. And then the other one was nobody heals until the ghosts speak. And she said that uh, always when something is multi-generational and it's causing harm, and the outward appearance of it all is very ugly and very harmful. There's ghosts that have not healed. And those ghosts swim in our veins. We all live on a stream, right? Uh, there's a song. One day I'll get back to finish writing this thing. But the lines of it, uh, the early, the, the, the lines I've finished <laughs> um, go, we are not points, we are streams, and nothing is as solid as it seems. And then it keeps going. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but we are points. We are, um, we are not points. We are streams. What do we see in each other right now 
is when that boat of flesh is, is riding on a river of blood. We're here because our parents were here. They're, they were there because their parents was there. And that those waves of life, uh, they don't die. They go into the undertow, right? And that's what each one of us ride into this world on. And the truth is we are born to redeem our ancestors, to raise and elevate our ancestors, even the ones who have done horrible things. People can only give what's inside of them. And then they can only give a lot of times what they got. And so we're at a time when we can't afford separateness. We've got to face that we are all children of one mother, sister and brother, human and other. You know, uh, and I, I get really uh, emotional about this. You know, what uh, Michael Jackson said in one of his songs, it was when he was studying with Deepak Chopra. And I can't remember which song it was, but there was this one line and it says, <clears throat> you're just another part of me. Now you tell me that's not wise. You're just another, and it's true. It's true, you know? Um, so there was a lot of things that carved me out, you know, that, and sometimes people are afraid to follow the undertow. Yet the greatest wisdoms have to be mined out. There's wisdoms that our ancestors want for us. There's sadnesses that they have. There's, and then the other thing is, the more you deep, do deep spiritual work, the more you also know we are all children of one mother, sister, and brother, human, and other. And her name is Mother Earth. And what's going on, say, in the Ukraine, my gods, you know, that is happening to me. It's happening to the Ukrainian part of me. You know, you know what I mean? I don't have that blood, have that spirit. We can no longer afford to say us and them. And God knows queer people have felt the pangs of pain when, it, when us and them are created. We're the queer part of one humanity that has the courage to be the, the grit and uh, convention's omelet, uh, right? We dare to be the one to say, uh, I will not uh, be dimmed, dulled, or retrofitted, you know? Yeah, and that's, I think that's like the <clears throat> powerful message of today of Saturn in Aquarius is that we are all connected. Like that's kind of what Saturn's saying. And just so y'all know, Saturn's been in Aquarius for the last couple of years. And um, it's been basically reminding us that we are all connected, you know? And the virus kind of reminded us. I hope most of us got the message that we are really connected as a human race. We all share the same similar vulnerabilities of death. We all share that with animals and trees and everything else. And I don't think any creature or person really wants to die. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I think that there's a resistance to it, even for a tree and even for an animal and definitely for humans, you know, most humans don't want to die. Um, and so I think, you know, or at least feeling that vulnerability towards that virus of it being able to take you down. Um, and even if you didn't feel vulnerability towards the virus, you at least felt vulnerability because everybody else in the world was acting as if. So uh, we all learned that we were um, connected, that we were all really honestly and completely connected. Hopefully we learned that. It's from your mouth to the ears of the goddess. <laughs> you know, on, on that tip, just real quick, uh, I loved masks that we had to wear. And, and here's why. When we would uh, stay home, you know, quarantine, that was to protect us and protect our breath and the breath of those we live with. But when we would wear the mask, that wasn't just to protect our breath. That was to protect the breath of everyone else from our breath. And what I loved about that, it's like a grail that we were drinking from every day. And the, I would hold my mask and I would look at it a minute. And that's what I visualized it as a grail that I was sipping from to remind me of my connection to others. Because we all dip into that same stream and that stream being of breath itself, of of the air that we must have, 
And we were learning very quickly, if we don't care for that air, not just for ourselves, but for each other, our cells will be in danger anyway. I loved the mask because it reminded me that. I didn't find it to be an inconvenience. Even the inconvenient parts of it was like a grip reminding me, don't forget, if you protect others, you are protecting you. And I think that there's also Pluto, you know, you can put people on Pluto when you need to, you know, like poof to Pluto they go because some people are not meant to be in our world you know, for whatever reason. And I think LGBTQ people, we have to learn to filter who's in our world because definitely some people can come in and we can be like, okay, this person can't be in my world right now, yep. you know, because they are bringing toxicity with them. So I think there's also, there's a balance and we could still feel connected to that person. And actually by sending them to Pluto, by giving our boundary, by having our space, we're actually respecting and loving them and us because we have, we need to just put them on Pluto so that we can love them from here. <laughs> Every time you say that, I've got this image going, you on the spaceship, you're off to Pluto. So you can be a good boy. <laughs> You're off to Pluto. <laughs> yeah, pretty no, much. <laughs> we could send that guy, whoever made the don't say gay law, whatever, that politician guy, he can go to Pluto. He'd Less probably be bad. better off there. Less so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So I just, I just, you know, I just think it's super, it, it's super important to understand our boundaries and to understand that we are all connected. So, because boundaries are important. <laughs> Did you know, uh, and this is a little bit lore about the evil eye, where I come from, they call that uh, blinking, winking, or overlooking, but sometimes they'll call it the eye that eats, isn't that chilling, the eye that eats. Now, how the eye that eats works, it's usually through covetousness, like being jealous of another, right? Where they, someone looks and says, oh, your child is so beautiful. In old country, you know, then uh, the mama would usually lick her fingers and cross their baby's eyes or something so that uh, they weren't coveted. Because the eye that eats, what it does is it bites you and then sort of bites your aura, creates a riff that leaks out so that you're starting to leak out. And that's what diminishes a person. I use that as a metaphor, too, because what we've all been through as queer people um, and what we were just talking about persons of color and what they've been through. Oh, my God. Um, and we can find some commonality there in that that we look, we go, yeah, I know what it feels like to walk out. To walk outside and, and wonder which one of you would be the ones who would try if, if you could get me alone, would beat me up, mm -hmm. would hurt me. I was hanging out with my, my sister, Susan Diamond, who I adore, you know, and we were, she's gorgeous. And we were walking along. She told me this profound thing about women's experience. She said, and she's, again, she's a dramatically beautiful woman. She said, but you need to understand, Orion, when I walk past a construction crew, I'm thinking to myself, which one of them is, is going to say something to me that's offensive and which one of them would rape me if I'm not careful? And she said, and I said, oh, my God, she said, it's not just women like me. It's just women, period, have this as an experience. And I found that profound when we understand how we're nipped at and leaked at leak out uh, by others. You know, the more we heal us, the more we become the healers of others. You know, the more I understand my wounds and the dust bunnies in my soul. <laughs> You know, the more my compassion grows and the more it grows into an informed compassion, even for the harmer, because hurt people hurt people. And perpetuating any harm, it's not going to work, folks. We can't hate something enough to love it. We've got some big assignments on us. <laughs> I know. And I noticed that you were starting to, um, were you starting to teach some online classes? 
Well, yes, yes. The quarantine left me a changed man. <laughs> you know, well, between that and my friend Winifred, who who helped uh, midwife me into this century. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, I was originally trained in the craft, you know, because I'm also a carrier of the craft, uh, old craft line. You had to teach in person. You had, you know, uh, mouth to ear and all this. And then the quarantine came. Da -da -da -da. Right. Well, you couldn't do that. So, you know, necessity, the mother of invention. So next thing you know, I had to teach online and I love it. I love it because what happens is people who can't, maybe they're immobile or they're in far distant, you know, far away places or they don't have the money to be able to travel and all that or all the things that are impediments. This erases them. It does. It does. I agree. It, does. it I makes it. it and it makes um, certain people more accessible and wisdom more accessible and things like that. I totally agree. <laughs> well, look at your yeah. show. The rainbow wings of your show, like ISIS, can expand all the way across the globe. Yes. And, you know, when we do magic together, have you found that the Internet allows for your ma for the magic to still come through? I found it to be even more effective. And here's why. When people were saying to me, oh, God, how are we going to do magic? We've got to be, you know, physically close. I said, oh, you're that addicted to physicality. I said, mm -hmm. we talk about betwixt and between. We talk about the circle between the worlds, et cetera liminal places well the internet is a is a place that is and is not it's a place composed of uh, uh waves basically so what i have found when we're working with beings and magical forces that are not place or time oriented and that's what you want you want to wedge it into the part of fortune you want to wedge it into that place uh between the threads of fate you know, and the, uh, the Internet allows us to do that. It, it kind of forces us. It says, OK, you don't have place and you don't have time now. Because right now you and I are in two different what uh, I'm in. You're in uh, Vegas, right? Are both of you in Vegas? No, I'm, I'm in, in Colorado. Yeah. You're in Colorado? I'm, I'm in yeah. Colorado and he's in um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yep. Where the heck did I get Vegas from? Bless my heart. <laughs> it's okay. And I'm in Maryland. Now think about this. It's thousands of miles, but we're all here. We're across the, what, two or three time zones, but we're on a magical time. So I, I found it to uh, challenge us to live the thing that we say that we work between the worlds. Thank you, Mother Fate. <laughs> <laughs> right? We didn't know what good would come of this. And I think it's great that Eve was, Eve just said that that they became much, uh, so much busier during COVID-19 because there was more socialization and communication. And I think Eve is very much sort of, um, you know, uh, limited on time because I know they happen to be in um, law school too. And um, and they also have a, a couple of challenges that make it make it harder for them to do things like hearing and stuff like that. So between those things, I think um, I think that you know it can it does it makes it more accessible and we can have more inclusion and diversity even. And I think feel like we're crossing lines. So I think that's beautiful. What if we and take so, a metaphorical approach to since it's betwixt and between. It's neither here nor there. It's not caught in a place. It's fluid. So the whole internet is queer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're it's throwing queer. that rainbow around the internet, eh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> we'll have rainbow internet lines. <laughs> yes. Oh, that'd, I'd be like great. that'd be great. <laughs> so what do you think? So can you help us define... I was looking at like, what is Appalachian magic? Is it just magic from that area? Where does it come from before that? Yeah, well, it, it depends on the migratory pattern because some parts of Appalachia you've got, uh, and you'll notice a difference in how we say it. Appalachia tends to be Northern. Uh, Appalachia tends to be Southern in terms of uh, how we say it. Cause I was in the North, I'll never forget. I was at Rice to Spring, I was on the workshop. A dear friend who's a scholar, and she's incredible.
but she tried to correct me. She said, that would be Appalachia. I said, oh, you're not from there, huh? <laughs> and I told her about the, the South North thing. So Appalachian magic doesn't look the same everywhere throughout Appalachia. But the one thing we do have in common is poverty. You know, uh, and so the thing about poverty, uh, just like racism and, 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 and uh, gender oppression, these things, as horrible as they are, have a strange way of pushing you to your core, pushing the coal into diamond, which is why you get things like good country music and jazz and all kinds of things that grow out of these, you know, difficult places. Just like our queerdom. Folks, I'm going to give you a quick quote that's not Appalachian, but because it's from Swami Dumbo. <laughs> my dear friend, Joriel, who's my best friend in the world, he, when I was at a horrible time in my life, he gave me this little plaque. I'm looking over at it. And it just says, the very things that held you down are going to carry you up. And it was, I say Swami Dumbo because it's a quote from Dumbo the Flying Elephant. So the very things in your life that hurts the very things that caused you to build a muscle of self-esteem that made you look real deep and mine out the diamond that you are is the very thing that will transport you or trans uh, transmute you into a powerhouse never surrender your soul on the altar of mediocrity they say i can't i say i can they say, I won't. Oh, I say, I will. <laughs> you know, and look at us in the face of, oh, my God. And then if you start stacking them on our queerness, our womanness, our transness, our blackness, you know, and I could keep going, our witchness, you know, all the things that were uh, that we had to fight to preserve. We also carved our place in the world as agents of change. So back to the Appalachian thing. So um, uh, Appalachian folk magic is just that. Uh, it's magic like all folk magic. It's magic, uh, really magic of the necessary, right? Uh, you don't see a lot of the privileged stuff in it because a lot of times it's uh, it maybe simple stuff, you know, magic for the crops, magic for the, uh, the weather, magic for healing. Like I'm a charmer. And when I say charmer, I don't mean like one who's got the charm. But, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I'm uh, I was, the elders saw me as a charmer when I was, oh, I was young, maybe six or something like that. Uh, you know, and this, this old guy used to come down from the Blue Ridge and he would go on his way to the farmer's market, you know, and then he'd tell me stories or he'd just tell me a charm. And the thing is, even as a little boy, I could remember him. And so, I remember, so in the Appalachian tradition, I would be known as a charmer, you know, and, and so and that's why the, you'll hear things a lot in rhyme with these little short chunks of wisdom. So it, it's, it's really magic of the necessary. There was no occult stores, none of that stuff. Chad, that stuff's in the city. We went to the woods. You know, my fancy altar was a knock and rock. Which is just a rock that's half in, half out of the land, where you go right and chalk on it, your petitions, or you take a rag, and you'd use it. You wanted it to rain, you you would be whipping that rag on there. You know, this is real quicky, but dipping it in water and boom, boom, boom with a rag, abjure the blood and all the stains to blacken the skies and witchcraft's name to raise the wind and bell the dame, and bring the rain and bring the rain. But likely, if I had a criminal in the area that was a pedophile, and I needed to get him caught and not hurt our children, I could also write his name on that same rag with a different uh, you know, charm and beat that rag until it was it was falling apart, which really is not to hurt him, but it frays up his ability to tightly knit himself and hide. It was magic of the ne of necessity, court case stuff, you name it, healing stuff, ton of healing stuff. I bought a... Um... A bottle from you a couple of years ago it was, and I think Cephalin was um, selling them at Rites of Spring and they were like little bottles and you told me that it would pull things out if yes. I put it under you or whatever it was like a vinegar or something and if I put it under me 
um, it would pull things out. Now, let me just tell you, underneath of my bed in the van is a little storage. It's like where my underwear drawer, okay? My sock and underwear drawer under the bed, okay? And so I tucked it into there. And this one day, and in fact, you know, I was at Sarah Luna and Andrew's house. And I started having extreme pain in my right side. And I didn't know what was happening. And you know I've had some health problems. And this is the beginning of it. And I didn't know what was going on. And Sarah Luna was like, it sounds like you're having a gallbladder thing. And, you know, and she kind of like lit me up to what it was. She she gave me the aha. Now I know what's going on. And then I went and laid down. And I while I was laying there, it occurred to me that I had your bottle right beneath me. And I just tapped into it like psychically for a minute. And um, and I thought, okay, well, now's the time. Whatever's got my gallbladder blocked up, feeling like this hurts really bad, please help me. Um, it was really painful. Um, I mean, it was close enough that I almost, you know, called yeah. 911. And I was laying there. And after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it just started to fade away mm. like a bad memory. And I have not had it that bad since. Mm -hmm. That one time, and I'm so grateful. Now I take a regular gallbladder, gallbladder cleanse. And, um, and, I'll, and, you know, I'm just saying that it worked. And so that's, that's kind of like a little charm for you, right? Like those little... You kind of bless those, right? Yeah, those are blessed. That was Four Thieves vinegar. Now, there's lots of Four Thieves vinegar out there, but not lots of it that's the original recipe. The original recipe is usually passed down in families ever since uh, the medieval times, and that one is one of them. Uh, and that, that one was passed down. That is a powerful recipe for a lot of things. It can take off, you know, uh, negative energy can take things. You can use it in your home to ward negative energies, you know, and then you take it and you, you know, toss it away. You can even take it if you want something to go far from you. If it, if it hasn't evaporated, then you take it after uh, three days. If it's set in the four corners of your house, say in the little cup, and then you would throw it at a, a stump. A stump is a rotten, rotting stump. That's takedown energy. It's rotting. It's taking things apart. Or you would take that to uh, a, a creek. Uh, uh, a river and throw it into water that's running away from you. You see what's happening? They call that mm -hmm. fixing, fixing your working to something that's naturally already happening, you know, but that, yeah, that when these old charms and these old uh, workings and these old practices like the fourth use vinegar, one of the many reasons they have power is they have the momentum of the past. They have the power of every charm, every prayer that's been whispered before you. And then you inherit it and it come, you're, you're adding your breath, your, your potency, your spirit to it. And that's what makes these old things work so strong. You know, old line witchcraft and, and old line magic is, uh, and folk magic, which is my love, uh, is really about... Um, Things that work because they, you know these were poor folks. These folks could not afford from not to work, and folk magic passes on to generations because we pass the best. We try to pass the best on to our children or grandchildren or family. You know, that's one thing I'm really I'm finding myself because uh, I don't have any children, uh, physical children. You know, have a lot of spiritual ones, and then uh, I, I I've been looking at the queer magic part. And saying to myself, challenging myself as an elder, what do I have to pass down that mind, that stream of us, you know? And that's something I'm giving a lot of thought to. Thanks to you guys, y'all. No. Nah. <laughs> really, really yo, being on here the first time and here again, I look at what you do and it's, it's challenged me to rise up in that area and go, now have I contributed enough to the queer part of me and to the queer lineage and to the to make sure that my sisters and brothers and 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 others are all uh, have the best of what I can do and what I can contribute, so that we're ever growing. Well, I encourage you 
to look towards a group that has done a lot for the queer community, and that would be the Radical Fairies. <laughs> I love them. And I know you do, and we love share them. that. So I, since you are a Radical Fairy, and I am also a Radical Fairy, I thought that before we take our little break, that I would sing you the official Radical Fairy birthday song because tomorrow's your birthday. <laughs> I love you. So okay, so I'm not the best singer in the world, but it's not about the it's not about the tone. It's about the lyrics. Okay. It's your birthday, your birthday, you're coming to the earth day. It's your birthday, your birthday, you're coming to the earth day. We are so glad that you are here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We are so glad that you are queer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We are so glad that you are near to us today. Hey, come on now, make a wish now, name it. Sun and moon and stars proclaim it. God and God and both and neither will frame it. For your birthday, your birthday, mm. your birthday. Make a wish. Ooh, it's the best. Of course, I do it in silence because nothing succeeds like, like a secret. <laughs> and that is the. Thank you. Uh, I actually know that we both, me and Orion, both know the DC Radical Fairies made yes. that beautiful, wrote that beautiful song, and they are a very large group of queer pagans, and they are worldwide, by the way. Uh -huh. So, Lacrosse, take us away. Okay, I'm gonna take you away. So, everybody, gonna go to the back room. We'll be right back. everyone. I'm LaCrosse. I'm your host from Master of None, and this is Lil Nuggets. Now, um, before we begin, I want to tell a quick story. Years ago, I went to a rabbi. As soon as I walk in the door, this rabbi uh, looks at me and says, there are no rights. Like, I didn't even get to sit down. Um, he said, there are no human rights. There are no gay rights. There are no women's rights. There are no rights. And at first I was just taken aback and I'm thinking to myself, what do you mean <laughs> we don't have any rights? Like, I've never heard of such a thing. And he says, hear me out before you get upset, hear me out. There are no rights, there is only responsibility. It is our responsibility to treat people with respect and kindness and compassion and tolerance. It is our responsibility to take care of the earth and all the creatures that are in it. It is our responsibility. It's not a right. And sadly, when you start realizing that it's your responsibility, the ego starts to move out and the ego takes a seat back because when you think of rights, you think of me and I want this and I need this. But when you think of it as responsibility, the ego sits back and you start thinking we and us and the world and the universe around us. So that's today's little nugget. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe and you have an amazing day. Now you can support Master of None through our online store. We have home, accessories, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and much, much more. You can purchase at www 
www.masterofnone923.wixsite.com slash my dash site slash store. Thank you. Jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So what exactly does that mean? It is a figure of speech in reference to a person who has dabbled in many things rather than gaining expertise by only focusing on one. So much knowledge and wisdom out there at our fingertips, yet so difficult to grasp. Everything and everyone has a little piece of the truth, and it is up to us to determine what our truth is. In this busy world, creating the time, the space to nourish our bodies, mind, and soul has become a difficult task. So let's take a moment to learn something, something small, in whatever way the universe decides to reveal it. It could be someone's story, a quote, a spiritual practice, maybe a song or a movie. The opportunities are limitless and all around us if we just take a moment to see. We are all students of life experiences, so let us learn from one another. There is no right or wrong path. There is only your path and your journey. <laughs> so let's begin our adventure and explore all the world has to offer and let us become a master of none. <laughs> welcome back everybody i love your little nuggets lacrosse i'm just Thank saying you. it's special <laughs> little bit of wisdom and look at this a lot of people agree chanel Aww. is on point with there and eve and Thank i you. really appreciate that and um orion everybody's saying happy birthday oh, yes. Thank happy you. Birthday. Eve said, happy birthday. May your next year on the planet be best so far. And Anthony sent you a birthday cake, which I personally Ooh. would love to have a piece of. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, everybody. I'm on a diet, so a virtual piece of cake sounds great. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Sandy. So everybody's happy. It's your birthday. I love and what I would... And if you remember right, Orion, just the other day I asked you, I, I told you that we were playing a game. Oh, yeah. So don't say our word yet. Um, but Orion provided me with a word that he thought would be good. So did anybody get it out of the email? If you have the magic mm. word, now's the time. Put it in the comments so we could see it, my friends. And we're on to just we'll continue to talk. And if I see the if I see the word come up, I'll let us know and, and we'll definitely talk about it. Eve, it is not rainbow soul. I'm not gonna pick rainbow or soul Eve. Eve. Eve's so funny. They're so busy in school. I know that they would take time to read the newsletter if they just weren't so busy at school. So um, the other thing that I, uh, seen Orion is that I seen that you were like teaching some stuff and doing your fairy seership and all of that. And I, and I also want to know the, one of the things that I thought would be really specifically helpful for a lot of us is to understand our connection to the stars, to the cosmos. Cause I just... I just think that that's a key that we need to remember and connect with the stars in that way. Well, lots to say about that. You know, uh, when, I, when I, I've been writing a book with a dear friend, Susan Diamond, on stones and crystals and stuff. And one of the things that I found out during the writing of this is that all the iron in the universe, all of it, no exception, comes from burnout stars all of it, including the iron in your blood right now. And did you know 50% of the water on Earth is older than the solar system? Water existed before the stars. It was ice. So 50% of the water in your body is older than the sun. The iron in your body is billions of years old, not millions. So I wrote this little ditty. We are, uh, we are stars with human feet, encountering starlight in all we meet. Know this, grow this, and ignite, and the stars will guide you to the darkest night. And this is literal. Uh, we came here riding on a river of stars, on a stream of light and, and, and divine breath, 
emanated from the void that breathed. You were there at the Big Bang, and it's still banging. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, <laughs> and, and it is so important. When I was uh, developing the Tree of Enchantment, which was the name of my second book, which really is like the driving manual <laughs> for um, fairy seership, because after that, I developed a seven-year apprenticeship program. And my contact in the fairy traditions, an ancient queen, an ancient fairy queen named Bree, who is the heart and soul of all I do, who I love with everything in my being. And as she was uh, guiding me towards how she wanted her teachings to look, she required me to teach about the upper world. Now, if you, if you know about the fairy tradition and it's folkloric in the ancient sense, it's entirely a surface world and underworld tradition. And the reason is, is because uh, uh, many of the t older teachings about where they come from is that they are a, a part of the fallen angels. But these are angels that do not take the side of the proud, you know, angel and all that stuff, you know, but it's basically those who were ambivalent instead of those who decided on a battle. It was those who made no decision and felt that neither was right or wrong and fell into the, the water, the sun, the moon, the earth, the wind and became the inspiriting uh, uh, secret commonwealth of all the elemental states. These are the fair folk. These are the angels in the land. So un the underworld, which is really the inner world, and underworld work is about unearthing from our living memory the deeply imprinted knowledge. Because this work is not about teaching something, really. It's about encouraging, no, rather, I put it a different way. It's not about putting something in. It's about encouraging something to come out meaning a, a deep abiding wisdom inside of each one of us. Ultimately, everything is from the stars. I was reading one day about Shungite, which I just love that stone, it comes from Russia. And when I was looking deeper in it, you know, one of the reasons it's so effective with our bodies is it has fossilized fullerenes in it. Now, fullerenes are considered a, a spiral uh, carbon form that is at the very basis of life itself. And here's where it gets so cool. So the fossilized fullerenes are in it. And so it says in, in, in Buckminster Fuller is the one who discovered this. He got a Nobel Peace Prize for this. So it said in the write-up on it, we believe fullerenes to be of extraterrestrial uh, origins. And I start laughing because it was a long uh, a time when the irons of ET uh, origins, and just this list of things, right? And then I start laughing. Earth is of extraterrestrial origins. <laughs> it's so easy for us to forget that the Earth is part of the sun. The sun is a part of the cosmos, right? So our lineage rode here on a river of stars. On the first, on the light and movement of the first star ever lit on the altar of heaven, when the void breathed forth the first star, which ignited all the luminaries of heaven, including you and I. And that light dances between our neurons. If you look at a picture of a synaptic, a presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron exploding, you know, sending neurotransmitters across that cleft, and this is happening right now. This is how we know uh, sound and color and Thoughts, I'll just everything, mood, it's defined by that. And you see what it looks like when it, when it shoots those neurotransmitters over to the next neuron. It looks exactly like it looks when a star is being born in the, in the, in Orion, which is a star nursery. So, you know, as above, so below. In the end, we learned that there is no up and there is no down. That really upper world, lower world is inner world and out there world. And that what's in the middle is a transient state we call physicality on its way from somewhere to somewhere, <laughs> bridging new states of awareness. Um, as I have done that, I swear you go with fairy tradition, you go down to go up, right? Um, a finger would never try to run away from the hand and think that it's going to evolve, right? <laughs> that wouldn't work too good. <laughs> so likewise, we are uh, when we descend into an understanding of the undercountry, which is the old name of the of the fairy realm of the underworld. 
um, and we start to integrate ourselves, we go through ourselves, through our ancestry, into the living memory of the land of which we are made. And then from that, we continue going down into the gestational reality that comes out into the stars, closest stars beneath our feet. Wow, yeah. and that's beautiful. Like when I think about that, what that inspires me to is astrology. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like the planets are talking to us. They're telling us and helping us harvest lessons that may seem hard sometimes. I think that's kind of what the astrologer does. They bring those messages through. And astrology was an ancient science. And I'm sure, did, I'm, I'm wondering, did the Appalachia people, uh, the folk, like the folk magic, did they ever uh, talk about the stars or the planets or that kind of thing or astrology at all? Well, uh a little, well, I can't say as a as a general statement that they did or didn't, because you know Appalachian folk tradition, like any others, changes depending on the area you're in. But one thing they did do is they planted by the signs. And I remember my neighbor, Miss Atwood, and I got to go back. I just found the information so I could go back and learn it again. Uh, she would teach me, you know, whether it's the sign, it's in the sign of a head, the head, which is Aries, or the sign of, you know, each part. Of, of the uh, zodiacal uh, wheel is imprinted at different points of the body, right? And so, so they'll do things like that, planning by the signs. I didn't I'm trying to think if I heard. I didn't hear anything else other than or by the moon. How about moon, by the moon? Oh, oh yes. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Cutting your hair, when to get pregnant, when to when to harvest, when to plant, uh, all of that by the phase of the moon and then the signs. Oh, thank you for mine and the days of the week sometimes. Oh, There's okay. The, uh, Monday, moon, Tuesday, Mars, Wednesday, Mercury, Thursday, Jupiter, Friday, Venus, Saturday, Saturn, and Sunday, sun. That's astrology. I took a magic astrology class, how to integrate magic and astrology in your life. And that's exactly what, that's exactly uh, the format that he used when he talked about so, you know, if you want to do something like your finances, do it on Saturn's day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like My favorite to time books. to shed limitations is 12 midnight on Saturday. Because you start while the hand is like 10 of 12 or something. You start uh, building your stuff up to cast off. And so you start casting off the limitations. And then when you hit midnight and it goes over, you start, uh, you know, dressing yourself. So that's where you get bitter baths and sweet baths, you know, for instance, uh, to cleanse and cut away and uh, road open, block busting, and then uh, to build on, to cover yourself. I'm sorry, you'll get me started on this stuff. I love it because <laughs> I love teaching. I love watching people become powerful. We are born to become powerful. I want every queer ear to hear this. You were born to paint the truth of your spirit onto the canvas of form, never to be trapped in another's painting. You were born to be powerful. All of us it were. Power is the ability to affect change. But what you want is power upheld by wisdom and guided by love. You won't go wrong with that. But because uh, I hear sometimes people say, I don't want power. You know, power is bad. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what one does with power and how one sources power. True power comes from within and comes from nature itself. If I have to diminish another to increase, increase me, that's not true power. You know? So, and that's why some pe and that's why like the Dalai Lama personally, when he speaks, people listen and he has a lot of power and he never diminishes people. He usually picks people up and raises people. I've seen his interaction with people. And like, um, what's our young environmentalist, um, the autistic girl. And when, when he met her, he was very like, oh, you're amazing. And he lifted her right up. Like he didn't hesitate. And, and he, the people that are around him, like interpreting or whatever, He's also very gentle with them. And I feel like he has some like 
power to him. When when you listen to him, you're like, hold on, listen mm-hmm. to this guy. He's got some wisdom. Listen. We do not decrease ourselves by increasing each other. Right. You know, for instance, someone just talked to me recently. They wanted to change some, some stuff going on with their uh, job, you know, getting promotions and stuff like that. So I asked them, I said, when you see others getting a promotion, how do you react? And they said, well, I get kind of upset because I want one. And I said, that's what's keeping you stuck. When others are being promoted, no matter who they are, celebrate it. Celebrate it with them and let that art, let that splash on you. An attitude of gratitude sets the latitude. Fly high. You know, get into that vibe. We do not decrease ourselves by exalting each other. Not at all. No. And I love what Mixter Sage Hall said. They quoted you as if, <laughs> and I think that's fantastic. So they love your, they love your quote. And I want to say, Eve, as far as I know right now, you won, Eve. Congratulations. <laughs> Eve Go apparently Eve. found the email. <laughs> Go Eve. You got a yep. sticker and I'll eat, I'll message you later, Eve. Um, and, you know, get everything sorted out so we find out what sticker you want. And um, congratulations. You are the first yeah. person to win the first season two sticker. And mm-hmm. we are happy to send it to you, Eve. Thank you. Right. And just speaking about exactly what you were just saying, Orion, about how in folk magic, they sometimes would mm. plant by the uh, zodiac signs. Oh yeah. I just recently learned that people going, so that when the sun moves into Aries, that's the astrological new year. Okay. And that there was this old tradition that's handed down and it sounded a little folk to me because it was on the first on the first full moon after your egg after your first chicken laid an egg (laughs) in while the aries is inside it's something like that and i was like really and then the lady was like but if you just want to be modern you can just celebrate when sun moves into aries and i was like (laughs) okay great and when the first moon comes into aries the first new or a whole um full moon and the thing you want to do is vision what you want to manifest. So Brighthawk and I made a vision board with some friends. Um, we actually did it online. We did it in like a, a, a imaging thing. And then we just printed it out and put it on our wall so that we could look at it every day. And it's all the things that we want to manifest. And so far, so good. All of a sudden, we found funding for Let's Dance, possibly some funding for Rainbow Soul, and a whole bunch of things have just gone poof, uh, and appeared in our world. So I want to say the magic is real. (laughs) Yes. Well, you know, eggs are used a lot in Appalachian folk magic, in every folk magic tradition I've I've seen, uh, to take things off of you, uh, to, to, to bring things to you. And in fact, at this time, we would write a wish on that egg, right? And, and they call it the, um, what's it? The, uh, the stone that blooms because uh, the egg seemed hard, and this was back in the days, but they also knew that the calcium that forms that egg is, you know, the calcium that forms that egg is just like the calcium that forms in our bones. And all the calcium that we take in, chelated calcium, comes from the decayed bones of ancient living things. And it's the plants then that take that up inside them, change it so that we can then take it into our bodies, right? And so... Uh, uh, we're, we're, that's, that's an ancestral uh, practice to uh, use the shells, to use cascara. Uh, so cascara, they call it the, the ground up uh, eggshells. I may have that wrong. I think so. Cascara. cascara. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was like, <laughs> rescue me, lacrosse, rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so eggs, we could do a whole show on eggs. Eggs are incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, this is one of the reasons I get, you will see me get TO'd. Because when I'm sitting around and people disrespect chickens, I get mad. Mm-hmm. I get mad. 
because if I go down the list of things that these incredible birds give us, you know, how dare we disrespect something that's given us so much, you know, chicken feet. We use chicken feet too, you know, which the chicken feet are used to scratch the or to scratch the feet to scratch the luck back to the surface. I think it's interesting that so much different folk magic pulls from eggs. Like um, yeah. for when we did an Ostara ritual here on Rainbow Soul and Eve was actually played um, a, uh, what I would call a transgender uh, deity in the Slavic tradition. Um, and their symbol was this, and I do Pisanki. So, um, so you can see the symbol there. We actually did two eggs, and I think I'm going to send this with Eve's sticker. Oh, they're um, really and they're for protection and for peace in Ukraine. So I'm just saying that, you know, Slavic, Slavic is, is the land of Russia and the Ukraine, and that, you know, before we had borders separating us. Um, and the folk magic there also had a big, like, Pesanki was like the gold of eggs like of all magic pasanki was the thing and it wasn't just used in the spring it was used year round and there's a lot of magic that goes into making one egg like you have to have a lit candle you have a special tool that looks pretty unusual and you dip it in magic and i'm just gonna say i'm just gonna pull the tool out just because the tool is right here i'm gonna see what she's getting <laughs> They, yeah, see it? It's kind of, yeah. you put up here, you dip it in the hard wax, and then you hold it over the flame, and out here comes wax, okay? Oh, oh and that's real cool. And you uh, layer the egg in different colors, dyes, and you do one at a time. It's no joke. It's, it's an interesting magic and an interesting art form, but I mean that it's, it's heavy, and it's it's uh, folk magic in that, you know, like they, Pasanki, if you gave your neighbor a Pasanki, that was a way of making peace um, or giving a gift of magic. Like if there, somebody was sick in their home or something like that, you know, you would give them a Pasanki. And um, so we made wishes on these Pasanki and they've been sitting here in my basket of Pasanki. Um, I actually have been making Pasanki for a few years now, for a couple of years now. And gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous. And they're fun to make. They're interesting. So I'm just saying that this is another level of folk magic, you know? And I was wondering, did they ever decorate their eggs like that? Put special symbols on it? Because these are all symbols of the Slavic tradition. Well, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming it's Appalachian folk magic, but... It's just stuff that I learned. I know uh, mom would do a thing with mom and grandma, and I know some other people's grandmas who would dye eggs sometimes with things like um, beet juice, uh, poke juice, uh, all kinds of different things, right? And the, and that the dyes meant things. Mm -hmm. That's the dyes meant things. Uh, and uh, those little egg trees that sometimes people will do where they take those plastic eggs. Um, now, mom was adamant that you had to do this. She said you had to have at least three or six eggs on that tree per person. And they put their wishes in it. Because, you know, okay. when the spring wind comes through, it's the giving wind. Right? Uh, what the, uh, the east and the south are, are giving winds. The west wind is a, a, is a ancestral wind. It's one that speaks, whispers ancestral wisdom to you. And the north wind is a, a completion wind, an ending wind. Uh, and so uh, and they would hang those eggs, you know, just like just a piece of string. Most of the time using red string, if they could. Red string was always a big deal. Uh, and any time we got red string or the string off the burlap sacks, uh, what that chicken feed was kept. I kid you not. We did mojos, same thing. They, they called spirit bags. You'd get the thread that's on like, uh, chicken feed, but usually it was more of a, like seed. When you buy seeds to plant your garden this year, or your fields, there'd always be this uh, tie around it of, of, of thread. And you kept that. The thing about the, the folk magic I grew up around was 
and mom made it clear everything has God in it. She didn't say the word magic, you know, because she wasn't a witch, of course. Um, she, uh, you know, like when you made, when you had to do a spirit bag and it had to work, you got a workman's shirt, a workman's flannel shirt that still has his sweat on it from heavy lifting. And that's what you would use because those flannel shirts have that crisscross, the X, uh, get what they call that, uh, the X pattern on it, because you can't cross what's been crossed. In other words, it's crossed with the blessing already. That's why you'll see me sometimes do conjure wearing those. Uh, it's it's what is crossed cannot be crossed, so it's been blocked for something to be crossed. And you would take the uh, sometimes even the pocket off a workman's shirt that still has sweat on it, the pocket, just the pocket, right? So we keep these old shirts, cut out the pockets, and make um, a, a bag out of that or cut out the cloth and make a bag out of that. And the tie would be the, would be one of the strings, which is usually like a, look at what they made that out of. But you would take that and then you could uh, intertwine red thread if you were, if you had any. So anytime we saw red thread, we kept it. Mm. Wow, and it seems like red thread, Anthony said that red string is highly magical in lots of traditions including oh. Italian folk magic. Look oh, at that. Nice. And I'm pretty sure there was something about, I seem to remember reading about Slavic tradition. So, and I can't remember what it is just now, but I'm just saying that, yeah, wow, the red string thing. Yeah, and I yeah. never heard of the workman's shirt, but that totally shirt. makes sense. And, the, and feed, feed bags, feed and seed bags, because you got to remember, remember this, y'all, you want to get wealthy? This is a terrible thing to say. So it's just our secret, everybody. <laughs> and that is, if you ever see someone, you're in a bank line, right? And that's a really rich person. And they get their money, right? And they throw their little envelope away. Go grab that envelope. <laughs> that envelope has got prosperity power on it. And you take that... Uh, you take that and you can make your petitions out of. We take that and you can write your wishes and it curl that towards you. Remember, whatever you curl your petitions, you, you cur or your burnables, you curl it away. If you're getting rid of, you curl it towards, or fold it towards if you want to receive it. And uh, so just that idea, that has power. So does the dirt under a bank. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. I, we were things. just, we've been talking a lot about worthiness. So lacrosse, do you have anything you want to add or ask? Yeah, I've been quiet in the corner listening. <laughs> These are my moments. I'm like, hmm. I know, but you like, but um, you like this topic. I know. I yeah, talking. exactly. That's why I'm just absorbing everything and taking everything in. I said, um, uh, no, I was going to say uh, it's even like even in Judaism, the red string is used. I, I, I won't. Oh was stating yeah because it's a it's a kabbalistic meaning i don't know what it is because i'm not that good of a <laughs> i'm not, not a great friend. jew i'm not i'm not a really good jew i don't practice as well as <laughs> as much as i used to but um yeah but it's it's definitely something like kabbalistic it's like i don't know if it's a protection or something but the red string is used and mm. I think yes. that's with the blood too. I know the yeah. mom was, yeah. was, she, was, she had the Christian, mom did Christian stuff, but also you listen close at all this pagan stuff in it too. Uh, uh, that she said, oh, this is the infallible blood of, of, of what she said, the infallible blood of the God man. Mm. You hear that? The infallible <laughs> blood of the God man. She didn't just wow. say Jesus. Right. Cause she, Cause she used to say, don't you understand? Jesus ain't a man. He's a recipe. <laughs> huh? Interesting. A recipe. Okay. Yeah. And you think about it, and you and, and I remember I used to think, Mom, what are you saying? Right. <laughs> right. And then as I grew, you know, as a, a witch, um, I realized what she was saying. She was saying, This person is, you know, everybody's worshiping him. But that's like looking at the finger instead of what it's pointing at. You know, that uh that what he was really trying to do, and it says, I think it's Matthew, where it says, very, very true. And Jesus is saying this very, very truly. I say unto you, if you do as I have done this and greater things, you, sh you too shall do. He might as well said, yeah, raise Lazarus. Yeah, that was cool. You'll raise five. All you got to do is clean that spirit. Know that you and God are one and pray from that position. You know, cultivate the, the sacred heart. You know, yes, what was cool. 
he had it going on. Uh, what was done with yes was teachings is a whole nother <laughs> discussion. So yeah, mom would say he ain't a man; he's a recipe. I used to think so as a kid. I would say, Mama, is that why we make those cookies? Is that the Jesus recipe? Meaning the, you know, <laughs> the wafers that are given in a at, in communion. And she just shake her head and go, Mo Ron. That was from her favorite, Mo Ron. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, she said that was the blood of the, the blood of the God Man. And then and, uh, and I'd also say, well, what about the God woman? She just looked at me and she goes, whatever. Like that meaning, of course, I mean, God woman too. Right. God it's woman. just that old fashioned language. Um, <laughs> and Qu Quellen said, the Hebrew word for blood is dam, which derives from the dumb. same. Oh, dumb. I'm glad dumb. you know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> which is a dama. Yeah. Oh, I get a, ooh, I get a save Okay, that. which derives from the same root as the word for man, Adam, and earth, which is, how do you say that word, lacrosse? Maybe you Adama. should read this. Adama. Mm -hmm. Adama. It's, 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 Adama. His name is actually Adam. Adama. So Adam is for blood. Adam is man and earth and, we, and then Adama. So, mm. yeah. And then, of course, Quellen said, thus blood and life are closely tied, which totally makes sense, yeah. right? You know, we need our blood to be alive. Right. Thanks for that. Can I get a copy of that? What he said uh, somehow later. I'm going to write it down. It, it will be that. on the Rainbow Soul Facebook. It's on Facebook there. See Quellen's on Facebook. He commented Thanks. directly on the video on Rainbow Soul Vodcast. I can probably tag you in it. Um, I can probably like reply to it and tag Great you wisdom. in it. Great wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Quellen. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you know Quellen. Quellen's been at Rights of Spring. And, um, and then Eve said... If I recall correctly, the red string represents life and blood, but also is for warding against the evil eye. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that in Judaism, Lacrosse? That yeah, that's definitely in Judaism. And there's also like for like the babies, so that way they confuse Lilith because they believe that Lilith is gonna come get the children. They also do like a little hand with the red string on the baby's hand to protect the child and confuse it. That's why they don't announce the baby's name for eight days to confuse oh, yeah. Lilith. So because oh. they don't know if it's a boy or a girl. There's there's a lot of folklore and a lot of uh, uh, stories it. and magic in in Judaism. Yeah, you know we use that same thing. Like for instance, I have these San Pedro cactuses, and you know they're very sacred. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one came down through a shamanic line and was passed me. And so I have to cut one of them because it's sort of whoop down and I'll take that cutting and, and start another plant, right? So one of the things I was teaching some folks just a couple nights ago, they did it with me. I said, you got to tie a red thread around the area where you're going to cut. And you got to do that at least 24 hours before you do it. Because you got to talk to the plant and ask it if it will... Uh, if it will clone its power into that piece so that the great lineage continues, but mm -hmm. withdraw its power from the place of cut so that it doesn't feel pain. And you don't just rush up on a plant and cut it. Yeah. You know, that's the, especially if you want it to, to propagate it, you know? And so, and I, and I told them, I said, now watch this by doing this. When I, then I cut it and plant it, it will root within days. I said, all it takes is, is that piece of consideration to the spirit of this holy plant. And we would do red thread. My red thread still on I'm like a week late. I need to go over there and cut it now. But um, the, the red thread's still on there so that the plant knows here's where I'm going to cut. Huh. That's and it's so, wow, that's just beautiful. And I'm finding, I love it when there is a crossover of something, right? From tradition to tradition, like the eggs like the string Deborah is saying um, there's also a red string of fate in a lot of anime. Not Ooh. sure how traditional that is. It actually probably is really traditional Deborah um, because um, anime um, often, I used to know someone was big into Asian folk uh, magic. Mm. They're sort of like into the old Asian ways and, old folk magic you can look it up old folk and and apparently some anime a lot of anime is based on those based on that old stuff just like today you know we have shows that are based on old 
folk magic and things like that. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Deborah, by the way, is one of my granddaughters in the craft. Oh, yeah? And she is fabulous. She's, she's extremely wise. Uh, and she has a lot to teach herself. She's w very wise and wonderful. Uh -huh. I have to say that she's probably blushing about now, but um, <laughs> that's neat to know about. I wonder if we are also the red thread for the greater culture. I sometimes think mm. that I think that queers, I think we all have a very, um, I think we're here for a reason. Every single one of us, regardless of how much of an activist you are, whether you're a drag person or not, um, whether you live as out of the closet, like Orion has a, has a partner, um, you know, like whether you live out of the closet or even people that live in the closet, I still think that there is something about their lives that is here to influence humans away from the separation of gender. Yes, 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 yes. Can I say something about that? Go Wisdom, for it. Word, word, word. What's every syllable of what she, what you just said should be highlighted and illuminated. Um, the thing, y'all, that hurts us, the killer. If one wants to know the the name of of the true devil, it is not a being. It's the illusion of isolation, and the illusion of isolation brings about abandonment, fear, fury, and shame out of which is born the desire to possess, the resentment of change, and desire for absolutes, which is the uh, outer form of, or the inner form of all fundamentalism. Those things, all the soul cages of the world that limit, that harm, that imprison, that, that identify this is this and this is not that, uh, those block the fluidity, which is at the core of the creativity of humanity, you, dear, wonderful miners out of truth, you, dear, wonderful uh, agents of change, whether you know it or not, are a part of blowing up some of the consciousness set points that construct that uh, illusion of isolation and that soul cage so that now we have gender fluidity. Uh, and gender fluidity is the final really big step to fluidity of consciousness. And that's where we're going to be able to change not just ourselves, but heal our world. This is why I love queer people so much is because uh, we dared to listen to a dangerous voice, a voice that called us to become genuine, to become true to the life that sets within us and not to defy it. And by doing so, in some ways, we set the world on fire because that has a, a further effect. It gives sacred permission to everyone who's watching you to become themselves, you know? Um, and we are setting at an intersect of forces right now. And we are at a pivotal uh, fulcrum where all of humanity has got to step in to this fluidity of consciousness to uh, heal our world, our planet, to heal the, the living things that we harm and to heal each other. I swear to the great mother goddess, you are a part of the solution. And you are the solution you've been looking for. And you're not done yet. Mm. So whatever you do, keep shining. Whether you know it or not, you are igniting other fuses. We are, we are at, I, I'm so glad I'm alive. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind being in spirit too. I do both, but, um, you know, um, to be a, a part of witnessing some of the biggest shifts that humanity has known, it's high cost, it's high voltage, that's for sure. Hang on yeah. to your hats. <laughs> yeah, hang on to your hair, even. See, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. Look at Quellen said, Quellen is asking, how do you feel about the closet association with the personal underworld before transformation, birth, or rebirth could occur? I am right there with you, Quellen, that, um, that the Quellen, that Quellen is essentially saying that by being in the closet, it's kind of like 
being in their shadow before transformation, I think is what, what he's saying is mm -hmm. that, you know, and I would say that I would say that there's something about being in the closet and I've met people that have stayed in the closet their whole life. I know some uh, cross-dressing people that are still in the closet to this mm -hmm. day and have been their whole life. And I think that's their journey. There's something about it. And I've also been at the bedside of a woman. I think she was 90 something. And as she was dying, now she hated me. I was banned from taking care of her because I was <laughs> queer. Because I was a lesbian. And she didn't like that. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then... um. I was forced to be at her side because her regular caregiver was sick and it was either me or the other person that she didn't like, which I'm just going to say the person had darker skin and she was very prejudiced. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, but I still tried to love her as a nurse. And as I was helping her get comfortable in her bed and she was very ill and on her deathbed, she looked at me in the eyes and she said, I was like you. Mm. I'm like you. I'm just like you. Mm. Mm. And that's all she said. And that's all she needed to say. I knew exactly what she was talking about. And frankly, maybe that was her purpose in life in that moment of being queer. Her queerness didn't come out until she laid on her be deathbed, staring me as a nurse, feeling rejected and feeling like, why am I taking care of you, lady? You hate me because I'm queer. And for me to get smacked in the heart with that, mm. feel this woman come out to me in her last moments of death, I couldn't bear to tell all of her family, like her daughter, who I'm not sure could have accepted it, but I did tell her granddaughter, who was much younger, um that's beautiful it's just it was profound to me it was profound to mm -hmm. me and what message did it carry to me oh just because they hate you is probably because they're struggling with it themselves and you were there you had to hold open the gates of love because at that moment when she didn't risk her social positions for her it was worth it and, and, and she knew there was a sadness in her heart that if she didn't tell at least one person, she couldn't step into her eternal nature uh, carrying it. And so, and you were the priestess there. You were the priestess of a love that defies all limits. That's beautiful. It, 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 on that thing about uh, closetness, I think people have a right to be closeted. They don't have a right to harm others because of it, though. Right. So my feelings about closetness is, if they're doing that to resist harm, that it saddens my heart a little bit. It's different if they do that to be private or they just feel that that's right for them because we do have what they call in, in uh, old folk magic, the fallow time. The fallow time is when, for instance, in the winter, the world is not dead, it's sleeping and it's dreaming of itself into the next year. Uh, we have cocooning that uh, the caterpillar does before it becomes a butterfly. Some whole lifetimes is a caterpillar in the cocoon time. Mm. I think what helps us if we understand uh, that there is no death, there's the death of the familiar form. So when a friend dies, weep for the loss of their familiar shape. They'll never be in that shape again. Weep that, but don't weep that they themselves have died. Because, you know, energy is neither created nor destroyed, but converted. And so our attachment to that exact form is what also causes hauntedness, you know. And so for the soul, there is no past life. There's only a past embodiment experience. For the soul, it's a stream. It's not a point. And what my what Breeze said, my fairy wife in the, in the fairy tradition, she said, uh, don't seek the pearl, seek the string. But she said, when people think of lives, 
They seek the pearl. What light? What, what was I in the past life? What was? She said, you can do that if you want to experience that suffering all over again. But I said, no, no, thank you. <laughs> she said, seek the distilled wisdom and extract that wisdom from it. And then let the rest fall into the compost of timelessness. Um, you were standing there as this woman was on a threshold of moving out of one embodiment experience into her inner inter life. Notice the word I said, interlife. And it means her life outside of shape, her expanded life outside of shape. Because we go through some paradigm shifts you know, in that area as we shed, if we shed. If we don't shed, we get stuck in purgatorial places, you know, states. But otherwise, we start shedding and reviewing, and, and our heart, our spiritual heart begins to breathe again. As we breathe away from all the set points that we lived within. Um, I love what I love that story, Hollis. That just touched my heart. Well, <laughs> I always me. use it as an example that even people in the closet are here for a reason. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and I don't think we should. I don't think we should shame them for being in the closet. I think we should love them. Um, and that's what I did my best. I was still good to her. I was still an excellent nurse. And, uh, and I, and I am a good nurse and I knew I could be even beyond her prejudice, even though I knew she didn't like my coworker who just happened to have dark skin. And I'm like, good grief lady. <laughs> you have a lot of hates going on here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I felt kind of sad for her because, uh, frankly, my coworker was a great nurse too. <laughs> and, um, uh, so I just thought she was kind of missing out. And so did her caregiver. Her caregiver actually told her that. Um, I think you're missing out if you don't allow Hollis and, and, and this other nurse to take care of you just because of that. But, you know, um, people people are in the closet for their own reasons. And um, and I think we just, we just accept that. I mean, how do you feel about it, Lacrosse? People in the closet? I think people in the closet, I mean, first off, it's it goes down to it is their business and it is their choice and they have their own reasons for it. I mean, we all closet something. Nobody really puts everything out there. We all have our own closets where we keep our little skeletons in and stuff like that. So I don't, you know, whether it's because they're coming out as LGBT or something else that's in your closet, we all have something in the closet. So I think, I think it's, it's unfair for us to to judge somebody who's in the closet. We're not in their shoes, and yeah, and that's yeah. true. Yeah, we're not. And that's closet. part of their. We're and that's part own. of their. <laughs> right, and it's just kind of part of their journey. It's what yeah. they're up to. But and tap as we... into that as long as they're not harming another. Right. If right. they're in the closet, but then they're inducing harm on others who are not, right. that right. is fundamentally wrong. Yes, that is fundamentally wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love is no love is so uh, such a potent force, and it requires us to step up and show up in a different way. One of the things uh, I say to folks often: <laughs> two things, really. I love you, and you're powerless to change it. And I don't love you in spite of you. I love you because of you. Mm. You know, and we have a dear friend who's who's very closeted about uh, about cross dressing, and he identifies actually as straight. And he'll come here sometimes and be able to shed and, and be in secret and do his. And yet he's a loving man and a wonderful man. And actually, I, and, and in a way, I feel privileged to be able to give him a safe place. Hmm. But, I, but what I told him, I said, listen here, heed this witch's word. You're safe here and you're, you're definitely loved here. But if I hear of you inducing harm to queer folk uh, while being a queer folk, I'm coming for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he said, that's fair. I said, yeah, because we're, we're a special family in each other's hair, whether we're closeted or out. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, that's one of the things I appreciate about the queer culture is even you, Orion, when I first met you, I was like, Orion, I think we have mutual friends in common do you know the radical fairies? And it was like, we were connected through the rainbow 
automatically and through Brighthawk, right? You know, Brighthawk mm. is, of course, a queer person. And, of course, then, of course, I had several friends that you also knew that were part of the Radical Fairies. And so I feel like the rainbow can really connect you around the world any place you go, mostly um, assuming that the rainbow is accepted in that part of the world. There are some places in the world that is dangerous to be out. I had a friend that was working there um, in like a volunteer, like a Peace Corps type of thing in West Africa. And they, she could not be out of the closet about being trans, but she was fully, she's had all her surgeries and she's still on hormones. So she just couldn't tell anyone the way she was born, right? So um, while she was working, but, and I asked her how that was. And she just said, there were times that it was really hard because, you know, she knows a lot of um, languages and they, they would be talking about like essentially murdering queers mm. and she couldn't do anything about it in the moment. Um, and the work that she's doing is incredibly important as well. And, um, you know, and I just, I, I, I have to honor her bravery and she, luckily she's an American citizen, so she can come back and be out of the closet and be an appropriate, you know, and be who she is. And we're all very grateful that she's, um, that she's alive and she made the years that she spent over there. But I just want to pray for all the people in West Africa and all the queers anywhere, um, especially in West Africa. Um, and we stand by all the queers in the Ukraine and everybody else, all the LGBTQ people everywhere. We stand with you, whether you're in the closet or not. We're with you. And do your best not to hurt others if you can. And um, let's be good to each other. So I think we are now ready to wrap up. I appreciate you so much, Orion. Oh, I'm just like going to say. So much. Man, what I'm a from... great way to celebrate your birthday. I we know, are this glad is to the have best. you. <laughs> this is the best. May I offer a blessing at the end? Like right at please the end? Do. Oh, please do. Well, I'm going to do a tarot reading. Do you want to do it after my tarot reading? I'll do it when you say to do it. <laughs> okay, you do it just after this tarot reading. Because this will only take a minute. I've been shuffling the cards as we've been talking here. And the cards have been talking this week because we have a whole bunch of planets in Pisces, which makes everyone's intuition whew, go up. So if you've been noticing that your intuition is on point, that's because... There's a lot of magic happening in the skies to help light up our intuition. And so the first thing I want to say is anything I say about these cards or anything that comes out, just remember to take what you like and leave the rest. Only some of this is meant for some of us. And this first card is in the past and it's meant to remind us of something from the past. And this is actually a reminder of love, mm. of commitment, of togetherness. And the things that we create with each other and the, the, the babies we have, it doesn't always have to be in the physical way, like having a baby. And of course, some of us queers definitely have babies, but we also make other things. We have books, we have, we have projects that we work on together or other th uh, projects that you work on. And that's what this is. It's meant to remind you of the relationships that you value and the things that come from that, the things that you manifest with your relationships. And the right now, it's an interesting card because I'm looking at it going, whoa, who's getting married? Um, this is all about commitment. This is going deeper in commitment. This is about committing to a deeper life path, to committing to doing something with someone, to going deeper with someone. Whatever it was, there's some sort of commitment going on in your life and spirit is affirming it. Spirit is validating it and saying, yes, go for that. Because stay in that commitment because it is going to take you to a place where you can present your work. You can display your work in a good way and the, and all of that work, just like here, in case you didn't know, um, a, a pentacle is, this is a pentacle, not a pentagram. Pentagram is the other way. You have to flip it upside down. This is a pentacle. They are, um, you know, it's a, it's a portal 
So each one of the pieces of work that you display, that you bring out to the world is a portal to the next step, to the next thing, to the next special thing that you need to be doing. So that's what this is all about. Remember the connections that you have. Remember the beautiful things that you've made. Stay in your commitments. You were on task when you made those commitments. You did a good job. Stay in them. You're doing the right thing because it's going to lead you to your to displaying your work and being proud of your work in a good way and being able, those pieces of work leading you to other places that you might want to be going or that you don't even know you want to go and you'll just be delightfully surprised. Um, and that's what this is all about. So take what you like and leave the, leave the rest, my friends. Um, and just know that the cards are speaking to you too, even if this is a recording and you're hearing this days later. Please. It's for you, too. It's meant for everybody. All right, Orion, I know you have a beautiful mm. blessing for us yeah. as we close today. And thank you, Hollis. Thank you, Lacrosse, for having me oh, on again. Thank you. thank you. And everyone listening in. It's a blessing and an honor to be on here. So uh, on, uh, for all of our, uh, our queer folk, seen and unseen, known and unknown, named and unnamed, <clears throat> to those in the Ukraine, to those in harm's way anywhere, let us raise our arms and sense the great waterfall of light, that stream of light and movement that we all rode on from the unmanifest to the explosion of light that gave birth to the universe. Each one of us are a representation, each one of us are an outer reflection of that stream, that great waterfall. So sensing a waterfall of gold and white light falling from the heavens, the stream of our being, we call down this cloak of the angels on all queer folk that are in any way in harm's way. We call down the cloak of the angels, fall down as a waterfall of light, guiding, guarding, and blessing each one of you and us by day and by night. Let this cloak wrap around and let it be so tightly woven that no harm or bane can penetrate it. Let this be written into the book of the law as it is, as it was, as it ever shall be. So mote it be. May all the powers of love encompass you all through all nights and through all days and in all good ways. Thank you. Thank so you. mo to be. Mo be. As you. we say, han han katu. <laughs> what did you say it again? Say it again. Okay. Han han katu. Is that Which a Jewish? Means, no, that's actually Taino. It's, okay. Uh, Taino. It's, it's just because you said it, it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for that. I have a particular love for Taino. We'll have to talk about that sometime. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's a it's, it's hey. I, I did want to say something that was about it. the stars and the Taino. Um, they didn't. I mean, they were great explorers, and the stars were everything to them. And I think that's a lot of indigenous tribes. It's yeah. they didn't just let it guide them to their destination. Outwardly, they let it guide them to their destination inwardly. So it wasn't just, oh, look, the North Star, let's go that way. It was keeping yourself on track. There were a lot of, it wasn't like they would look at the stars and they would know what it, you know, like the planets or anything like that was Jupiter or anything, but they knew that the significance of it was to guide. So, so to say, maybe they stars, did. The stars maybe in they the downloaded heavens. wisdom. Go yeah. ahead, Orion. Stars in the heavens and stars in the earth and stars within that grant holy birth. Hmm. Exactly. It's beautiful. beautiful. I love all the wisdom. I agree with Sandy. <laughs> Thank you for all the wisdom and the energy tonight. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you. Thank you to the viewers. Thank mm -hmm. you to everyone that shows up. Thank you for people that come out and watch the show, whether this is your first time or you've been here with us since season one. 
welcome and thank you for being part of Rainbow Soul. And we appreciate you and thank you for supporting us. Please like, please subscribe, please comment, please put in a review. And if you do, take a screenshot of it and send it to my email and I'll send you a sticker. <laughs> well, we're going to do a contest about that later. But if you did. And um, and thank you so much for being part of Rainbow Soul. We appreciate, we love you. Please take care of yourself. And please always remember, you are a valuable human being. And we need you on this earth. Mm. Good night. Good night. Thank you for watching Rainbow Soul. We are so grateful for your presence and listening in this past hour. Be sure you're subscribed and get notifications so you can join us and catch us every Sunday night here live. We appreciate you sharing, commenting, reacting, and inviting others to the show. This is a show for you. So tell us, who would you like to see on the next show? What topics inspire you? You can always find replays, more about the host, blog posts, merchandise, information about games and contests, and social media links at Rainbow Soul. Dot show. We love to show our gratitude with fun and games and contests with prizes that celebrate who we are as a community. Rainbow Soul holds the intention to explore consciousness and spirituality in cultures with a deep reverence for cultural roots, equality, and inclusion. We are always striving to recognize the spiritual medicine available to all of us in the modern world. We hope that you walk away knowing that you are perfectly valid in whatever identity you embrace for yourself and that you are sacred just as you are. Thank you so much for tuning in to Rainbow Soul. Support Rainbow Soul. Check out the Rainbow Soul merchandise for your favorite new shirt. A variety of colors and styles to suit your taste. Show off your love for Rainbow Soul. Get cool designs with your favorite quotes. Designs come in a variety of colors so that you can express your most authentic self. Support Rainbow Soul in spreading the word that queer, gender variant, intersex, transgender is sacred. Rainbow Soul, putting the soul back into queer. Order your unique Rainbow Soul merchandise at rainbowsoul.show. In the land of Africa, there lives a hippo who learns to overcome being different through an ecstatic dance experience. Sometimes life is sweet, and sometimes life stings. It's up to you to decide. What are you willing to be? asks the honeybee. The firefly reminds us that only you can shine your light. The butterfly speaks of the wonder of transformation, while the moon helps the hippo feel a confident glow. Find out what happens in a hippo dance trance. This beautifully illustrated book presents expressive artwork through gender-neutral characters that deliver messages about being yourself, perspective, and personal transformation. Order today at brighthawkproductions.com.